Hello, I'm William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and uh, a theme that I've noticed in, in contacts from parents this summer. Um, as, as I talk to, to parents who are, who are looking for homeschool options for their family, talking to me about studies and enrolling in classes in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, there's a, a recurring theme that comes up over and over again. And it's that they feel overwhelmed. Homeschool families feel overwhelmed. That, that word has come up again and again um, throughout this summer. And what I'd like to do in this video is, is try to help parents uh, understand why they shouldn't feel overwhelmed. I, I published a video yesterday uh, that was titled, How to Think Rightly About Homeschooling. And that's I think that that is uh, challenge number one, and, and I recommend you watch that video uh, to get over the anxiety that many parents have about education itself, comparing their homeschool to a, to a modern school system. That's the first challenge. Once you get past that and you, you understand what the purpose of homeschooling is and you understand how easy and simple providing your children with an education really is. It's really very simple. Once you are able to, to think rightly about homeschooling, you're then going to face a second obstacle. And that second obstacle is the sense that there are a million different options in homeschooling. And this is what, uh, based on my conversations with parents, um, causes them to feel overwhelmed by homeschooling. And one thing that, that marketing experts talk about is that when, when shoppers or, or people who are looking to buy something, they have a need and they're looking for a solution in the market. What happens uh, is that when, when shoppers feel like there are a thousand different options and they really don't have a means of choosing one with certainty and confidence, they end up doing nothing. They end up feeling almost paralyzed because they're being asked to invest money. They're, they're being asked to commit to a program or to commit to some, some significant purchase, hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And when we don't feel confident that we know exactly what the choice should be, it's very difficult for us as parents. Remember, I'm a homeschool father. It's very difficult for us to commit financially when we're not certain about what we're doing. And when we look at the homeschool landscape, the homeschool market, whatever you want to call it, it can just be overwhelming because there seem to be so many different options. Okay, and we can, we can identify some major programs like, like the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, Seton Homeschool, um, Memoria Press, whatever. There's a bunch of different players or, or uh, major names in homeschooling. And then, in addition to that, you have things like Well-Trained Mind, just giving lists and lists and lists of books. We have uh, people like Laura Berquist saying, hey, you know what, why don't you design your own homeschool curriculum? And, and parents look at this and, and they just say, how in the world would I ever possibly make a confident decision in homeschooling? How can I have any certainty? There are a million different options. I have two, three, four, five, six, ten kids. I'm, I'm going to be pregnant for the next six months. I, you can imagine the confusion that not, not just you, if, if you feel this way, not just you, but all homeschool parents feel because this market is such a giant mess. Now, through the years of homeschooling, um, I've got, I was criticized a lot when I started in 2008 because I chose not to jump into the homeschool crowd and just be buddy-buddy with all the other programs. I knew that there were programs in the homeschool market that were falsely advertising, and I demonstrated that to parents. But I, I got a lot of criticism for not just jumping in and becoming a buddy and agreeing to promote everyone else's stuff um, as part of this, you know, homeschool marketers or publishers community. You go to a homeschool conference and they all gather. 
They all bring all their stuff and they set up their tables and they just they all sell their stuff. They they support each other. They you know they 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 understand that parents are using all these different programs and they collaborate as this massive marketing system to just try to sell all their stuff and and that's the culture of the homeschool conference and I wanted nothing to do with that um, as a homeschool father first of all I was very dissatisfied with the options that were available I could see through all the fake classical talk I knew that that wasn't classical anything because I am a Catholic classicist. I knew that all of that was fake. I, I saw things like Seton homeschooling. You know, my wife purchased some of their books and we had a chance to look through things. I knew that that wasn't the quality of content that I wanted for my children. And so when I decided to go into homeschool publishing, it was because I had very specific objective criticisms of what was available and and they were criticisms that were serious enough to make me feel like I couldn't enroll my kids or use those programs I had to create an alternative that was actually true and necessary for Catholic students so I chose not to jump into the homeschool market and just network with everybody else and be buddy buddy I said no there are serious problems in Catholic education and the purpose of homeschooling is to solve these problems we're not just looking to jump from the problems of the local Catholic school to bring that curriculum home and goof around at home with the same flawed curriculum we're not looking to just bring the public school curriculum this secular minimum requirement education and install that as the educational culture of our family at home. That's not what homeschooling is supposed to be for. Homeschooling is supposed to be where parents with convictions and principles choose to educate their own children because the schools that are available don't offer the necessary education. That's what homeschooling is for. If I were to ask you, why are you homeschooling? The right answer the right answer should be because I have principles, I have convictions about religion, about what my children should study, about how to prepare for adult life, and I don't believe that the available schools will prepare my children and will teach my children the things that I as a parent think are important and necessary. That's why I homeschool, because it's my duty as a parent to provide my children with an education that agrees with my convictions as the parent and the local schools don't make that available that should be why parents homeschool and they should be able to give a list of their convictions and principles that require them to homeschool and then they should take that list and they should hold that list up as they look at every different homeschool option, every different homeschool program, and use that list to cross off options and say, nope, that's not going to solve this. Nope, that's not going to provide this. They should use that list of their convictions and principles as parents to choose a homeschool program. Now, I went into homeschooling with a list like that. And again, I, I'm pretty strict. I'm a Catholic classicist. I know what classical education historically really is. So I'm not going to fall for the Dorothy Sayers nonsense. I'm not going to fall for the three stages of learning nonsense. I'm not going to fall for this mother of divine grace or, or anything else that calls itself classical. I'm not going to fall for that stuff. I, I know that it's a sham. And so I'm going to look for something deeper. My principles and convictions allowed me to see through that stuff. So what I'd like to do in this talk is I'd like to get rid of this sense that there are a million options in homeschooling because there aren't a million options. There are really only two options that I think parents should choose between. And once you make this choice then I think things get very simple but there's no reason to feel overwhelmed because there really aren't a million choices 
It may appear that way, and the problem is the publishers and the marketers, because they really can't advertise any substance with proof or any kind of evidence to back up claims that they make, they choose to just all buddy together and network. And they like to create this idea that, oh yeah, you know, there's lots of great options, you can choose whatever you want. The only reason they're saying that is because they have no alternative. They can't say, we're true historically, what they're teaching is not true, what they're teaching is just public school curriculum. They can't say that because they're all doing the same thing. And the best plan for their program is to just network and be buddies together and sort of wink at the claims that they make and not hold each other accountable, not to ask each other for evidence of whether or not their claims are true. Okay, so what I'd like to do, and I had this discussion with a mother yesterday who, who was expressing this sort of clueless um, sense of being unable to, to make a decision uh, because everything seems to be advertising itself as historical, traditional, Catholic. This can't all be true. This can't all be true. But there's one thing that parents will say. One thing that parents will say. If you look around the homeschool market, if you look at all the different options in homeschooling, the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is different from everything else. And that's true. That's true. And that leads to the decision that parents need to make in homeschooling. And that's what I'd like to talk about, because once you understand this, you'll be able to see that the homeschooling market is really not full of many different options. It's not complicated. There's really a very simple decision to make. So let's talk about this. How can we understand, how can we make decisions in homeschooling? How can we get rid of this sense of feeling overwhelmed with options as homeschooled parents. Well, I'm assuming that in this video I'm talking to Catholic parents. Uh, that's, that's the assumption of this video. So if you're not a Catholic and you're watching this video, you have to understand that I'm a Catholic. I'm, I'm assuming that I'm talking to Catholics. If you're not agreed that the Catholic Church is the true church, if you're not agreed that the saints and wise men of the past are the wisest and best men to ever have lived, if you're not convinced that we should be raising our children to imitate the saints and wise men, if you don't have religious vocations available as an option for your children, the things that I say are not going to make sense, and I don't care because I'm talking to a Catholic audience. So everything that I say here is intended only for Catholic parents. We have a couple of simple decisions to make, very, very simple decisions, okay? If you're a Catholic parent and you live in, it's 2022 right now, if you're a Catholic parent living in the 21st century, you have a very simple decision to make in the education of your children. Very simple. This is, this is the first question. Do you want your children to receive the same education that was received by saints that you admire in church history? Or do you not care about that? That's the first question. Do you want your children to receive the same education that saints received in church history? So when you name the saints, you name Saint Augustine, Saint Jerome, Saint Thomas Aquinas, Saint Ignatius Loyola, Saint Dominic, when you name the saints through church history, saints that are considered educated and wise, do you want your children to receive the education that they received and share in that common educational tradition and culture? Or do you not care about that? And I don't mean that in a, in a silly way. I mean that seriously. Do you want to know that your children are studying the same subjects that the saints studied in history? Or do you not think that that's a priority? Okay. Now, when you hear me ask that, you may say, who in the world would ever think that that wasn't a priority in Catholic education? 
many people, most Catholics, don't care that the education of their children is actually the same system of education that was studied and taught by saints in the past. So if that seems like a ridiculous question, I don't think the question is ridiculous. The reality that Catholic parents in modern society don't care, that to me is what's crazy. But that is the first question we have to ask. There was an established tradition of Catholic education that was known by all of the saints through history, from the earliest members of the church, the earliest church fathers, through what's called the patristic period, through what's called the, the Middle Ages or medieval period, all the way to modern times, even into modern times, even into modern times, into the 15 and 1600s, there was one tradition of education known to all the saints. There was only one definition of what Catholic education was. Either you are concerned that your children participate in that tradition, or you don't. This is the simplicity of the decision that's before you in Catholic homeschooling. When you consider that question, do I want my children to receive the Catholic education that was not only studied by the saints, but taught and recommended by the saints all through church history? Not one specific period, all through church history. If you want that educational tradition to be participated in by your children, the only option that exists is the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. It's a very simple decision. If you are concerned, if one of your convictions or one of your principles is that you want your children to share in the educational tradition of the saints of Catholic Church history, then the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is the only option. And I can say that with absolute confidence and certainty, and I can tell you, if you would like proof that that's true, contact me. I'll provide you with all the historical evidence you could possibly ask for to prove that this is true. The only homeschool program that offers your children the opportunity to share in the educational tradition of the saints of church history is the classical liberal arts academy. If you'd like to study that on your own, go look at the academy website. You can see the free book that we make available called Understanding Classical Catholic Education. It explains the whole history of education from ancient biblical times, ancient Egypt and Babylon and, and ancient Israel, all the way up through ancient Greek history, all the way through classical Roman history, through medieval history, all the way to the present age. And we, I, we demonstrate in that book the whole tradition of, of education that existed and show that that is what we make available in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And there is no other homeschool program that even pretends to offer this education. No one even pretends. If you were to press a program like Mother of Divine Grace, which claimed, before the Classical Liberal Arts Academy was started, claimed to be classical Catholic education. If you were to press them on the use and the advertising of that title, they will admit to you that they don't mean that by classical education, this is actually the education of the saints. They won't, they won't even pretend that that's what that means. They tried, they tried to do that before the Classical Liberal Arts Academy was established and proved them to be falsely advertising. They tried to tell Catholics that. They tried to advertise to Catholics 
that they were offering the educational system of the saints of church history. It was false advertising, and I explained this in very great detail in an article on the website, uh, on the Academy website, titled How Laura Berquist, the founder of Mother of Divine Grace School, how she misled thousands of Catholic families. I show where uh, those ideas of that false classical education movement came from. I show how it, how it relates to the Protestant classical education movement that started at the same time and how it misrepresented the history of Catholic education and misled thousands and continues to, misled, to mislead thousands of Catholic families who are simply not interested in asking for proof that these claims are true because they're false. The only program that offers your children the opportunity to study what the saints studied is the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. No one will even pretend to offer that. They'll explain away their old, the old claims that they made that they were classical. They'll explain it away. They even come up with names like neoclassical, which means, oh, we're not, we're not really classical. So, you know, the Classical Liberal Arts Academy will admit that they're right, that we're not really classical. We're neoclassical. What in the world does neoclassical mean? New classical? No, the truth is you're simply not a classical study program. You're not a historically Catholic, traditionally Catholic study program. So just say so, but they won't just say so because they've built their whole marketing image and brand on this false message of classical education, just like the Protestants have. There's no such thing as classical Protestant education. It doesn't even make any sense. There's only one program that offers you a true classical Catholic study program, and that's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. So that's the question. That's the first question. Is that a conviction and a principle for you as a parent? If it is, you have one option. If it's not, then you have a million options because all of the other programs are just a bunch of different versions of modern study programs. They, most of them use the same books. If you go through the catalogs, it's the same books again and again and again. They're just retailing and selling lists and lists of books, all the same stuff with relatively meaningless variations from one catalog to the next. And that's what they are. And even if you were to look at those modern programs, I would say as a Catholic, there's Seton Homeschool, which basically gives you a Catholic public school education. Seton Homeschool. And then there's just a bunch of junk. Because they, they can't even make honest claims about what they do. They, they don't provide a Catholic public school program as well as Seton does even though they're all organized around the public school curriculum, they're all just K-12 programs. They've all got the same courses, the, the, sick, the same fake classical studies, which just means they, they promote the great books, which just sells boxes and boxes of books to, to parents who don't know any better. You've got Seton with a, with a modern Catholic public school education as one option in that world of modern homeschooling. There's Seton, and then there's a myriad of, you know, gobbledygook patchwork homeschool programs that just throw all kinds of junk together. Half the books are Protestant. Some of them aren't even religious. Just modern curriculum selling lists of books. At least Seton makes their own books. We can respect Seton for just being a modern Catholic school program. If that's what you want, I'd recommend Seton. I'd recommend Seton because if you're going to fuss and say, oh, well, we're looking for a little bit more. The other programs don't offer a little bit more. They just offer stuff to buy, all kinds of stuff. If you want a modern 
Catholic education, just go with Seton. That's what Seton is. It's a modern Catholic education. It's been around for 40 years. They cover all the grades. They'll get your kids ready for college. You can have a high school diploma. Just send them the money. They'll send you the boxes of books and you can complete a modern Catholic education. Go to Seton. That's what it's for. All the rest of this stuff is just gobbledygook. Most of it's false advertising, just trying to sell boxes and boxes and boxes of junk books to homeschool parents. I would say you have one option there that's, that's, that's serious, that I would consider. If I wasn't interested in classical education, I would just enroll my kids in Seton and not worry about it. Just check the boxes, get your diploma. You don't have much or any worldly junk to worry about in the Seton curriculum. And any complaint that anybody makes about Seton, it's just worse in other programs. Or there's, there's other bigger problems in those other programs. You're not getting a superior education in any of those junk book collection programs. If you want a modern education, my advice is go to Seton. Now, if you did choose to go to Seton, you can always supplement a Seton curriculum with courses, individual courses, in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. That would be fine. You could enroll the kids in Seton, and if you have extra time, if you get all that work done and you've got some extra time, because you should, because it's just a modern education, it shouldn't take you all day or all year to complete the Seton requirements. If, you, if that's what you want, you can get that work done, and then you can look at the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and say, well, we can add classical reasoning for a high school student. We can add Aesop's fables, or we can add Latin reading, or Latin vocabulary, or classical arithmetic, or something like that. So you can supplement the Seton curriculum with the Classical Liberal Arts curriculum. But, again, if you go with Seton, you are not giving your children the education that was studied by the saints, taught by the saints, and recommended by the saints. You're giving your children a modern grade level education based on the public school curriculum, and you're simply whitewashing it with Catholic images and taking out from it anything that might be explicitly anti-Catholic. But you're, for all of the pictures of the saints, when you see the pictures of the saints on the pages of the Seton book, ask yourself, would this saint have studied this book? And the answer is no. That's, that's the problem that I have with the Seton program. Why put pictures of saints on books when the idea, the idea of our study of the saints is to imitate them? We admire their lives. We're thankful for all the gifts that they've given to us, and we're encouraged to imitate them, to follow in their example, to listen to their wisdom. If we're going to actually imitate the saints, that would lead us to classical Catholic education. So while I would recommend Seton as the only Catholic curriculum that anyone should consider if they want to just satisfy the modern curriculum requirements, the question is, why are we putting pictures of saints in our books when we know those saints did not study this curriculum? These saints did not study in this way. We're not taught these things. And I'm not, just, I'm not even just talking about the saints. The wise men of classical history, men like Aristotle, men like Alexander the Great, all of the wise Greeks and Romans that you read about in Plutarch's lives, they studied the classical curriculum. Why put their pictures in these modern books? It's misleading. But, again, if you as a parent honestly don't care that your children receive the same educational system as the saints did, then I would recommend Seton. Just check the boxes. 
don't start talking about how you're interested in all of this academic stuff and you want your kid to be a writer. Don't fool yourself. It's just modern education. All of that stuff is just modern education. Just check the boxes and get the kids their diplomas because you're fooling yourself if you try to pretend that going to another program and getting all their goofy Dorothy Sayers stuff, boxes of paperback books, all this throwaway stuff, don't fool yourself and tell yourself or even pretend that you're giving your kids the education of the saints because you're not. It's just a modern education with a bunch of books thrown in a box to make it look different, as if reading more books is what makes you a wise person. What wise men? Look at the book lists. Look at the book lists. Which of the saints or wise men studied those books? They're not even the books that wise men study. The wise men study sacred scripture. They study Aristotle and the writings of the great philosophers. Those are the books wise men study. They don't study you know, Mark Twain. They don't study Lord of the Rings. Those are just, uh, they may be good books, entertaining books, but they're TV shows in, on paper. That's what they are. They're just entertainment. It's leisure reading. It's interesting. But that's not education. That's just leisure activity. It's like watching a movie or a television show. The real classical studies, we know what they are. We know what the saints studied. We know what the saints taught. There's no debate. There's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy for that education. And then there's just a bunch of gobbledygook, mix and match, modern school programs, all trying to pretend that they have substantial differences, but they don't. They're just modern curricula with a bunch of books thrown in for sale. The choice that you have, really, the choice is very simple, and this is why you shouldn't feel overwhelmed. There's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy if you're interested in traditional or classical Catholic education. And there's Seton Homeschool if you're interested in just a modern diploma program. Those are the two decisions, or one decision, the two options that you have to choose from. Honestly, those are the two options. Do you want to give your children a classical Catholic education? Do you want to be able to say that your child is actually studying books and lessons that St. Augustine studied, St. Thomas Aquinas studied, St. Ignatius of Loyola studied, and so on? Do you want to be able to say that about your children's education, or do you not care about that, and you're just trying to give your kids an education that leads them to a high school diploma. That's the simplicity of this decision. If you want the modern education and you don't care about that educational tradition of saints, then there's Seton that provides everything you need, relatively affordably as well. The rest of the stuff, all the crazy catalog sales, all the booksellers, it's fake advertising gobbledygook. Just ignore it all. Seton for Modern Education, Classical Liberal Arts Academy for Classical Catholic Education. The choice is really that simple. That simple. If you wonder, well, why do other people choose all these other programs like Mother of Divine Grace? Why do people choose? One of the reasons why homeschool mothers choose programs that they do is for their own social life. They're involved in a local homeschool group they're, they want to hang out with the ladies. All the ladies use this program, so that's what they use. Again, if you were to go back to your list of principles and convictions, I don't believe that that's a responsible way to choose an educational program, but that's very common for people to do that, to simply do what their friends are doing or what the other ladies or what the cool homeschool group does. But that's not a principled conscientious choice, that's not fulfilling the duty of parents in the education of children. But it's common. Like I said, the decision principles and convictions, the decision is between a classical education and a modern education. Now, 
let's say you get over that you get over that hump and you you make the decision and you say you know what I do want my kids I do as a Catholic I do want to know that I gave my children the education that St. Thomas Aquinas would have recommended for my child if he was alive today. I want to know that. I want to have that peace of conscience. So whatever my children choose to do in the future, I will know that I gave them the traditional Catholic education. I fulfilled my duty as a Catholic parent. And Look, we take care of those things in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy as well. We can lead the kids to all their high school diploma studies. That stuff is easy. That stuff is easy. That's not the question. The question is whether or not, as a parent, you want to know in your own soul that you did everything that you could to give your children the education that not only would be recommended by saints, but has been recommended by the saints. If you want that peace of mind, then you will choose to enroll in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And you'll be willing to overcome the difficulties, you'll be willing to learn new things, you'll be willing to ask for advice and figure things out, because you have principles and convictions that are not going to change, that are lasting and permanent, that are rooted in Catholic theology in the Catholic faith, in Catholic tradition, that's why we're able to overcome challenges. That's why we're over, able to overcome obstacles and difficulties and work through difficult times. Because we're principled. We have, we have principles that are going to last and allow us to persevere in the pursuit of noble goals. When you look at the homeschool community and see people bouncing all around out of this program, into this new program, changing this program, they, they boast about the constant changes of their curriculum as if that's some kind of sign of, of intelligence or principle. It's a sign of the absence of any principles, the absence of any convictions. It's literally judging books by covers and bouncing from one to the next by trial and error, experimenting with the children's education as they grow in real time. We can't do that. We can't play around with our children's education and try to figure it out as we live their lives and parent them right now. We have to be principled and make decisions based on convictions. We have to overcome difficulties. We can't fuss about inconveniences. It was much more inconvenient for the saints to study these things than it is for us, no matter what difficulties we face. You know, as an example, I chose to start this whole program and undertake this work because of these principles and convictions. That's what it takes. We have to work together. We have to persevere and fulfill our duties as parents and not just cop out and go with the flow or, or give in to the false advertising and just deceive ourselves and pretend that we're doing something that we're not because we stuck a picture of St. Augustine on the catalog. Let's say you get through this, you share these principles, you share these convictions, and you make the choice to enroll your children in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and commit your family to classical Catholic education. Once you do that, that first big decision is over. Nothing to be overwhelmed about. Very simple, principled decision. Very simple. You make that decision, then you come into the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and you see there are 100 courses. And this is the next wave of questions that I receive from parents. Where should we begin? Where should my children start? What courses should they study? Because I don't want the children to be overwhelmed. And that's a great question. That's a great question. Any parent who asks that question is thinking as they should be thinking. That's a great question. What courses should we 
start with because I want my child to have a good experience, to get off to a good start, not to be overwhelmed, not to be discouraged, and so on. I want them to love their studies. I want them to embrace classical Catholic education. So what should I do as we get started uh, and have to select courses in the academy? And the first thing I say is ignore the whole list of courses. It has nothing to do with a beginning student. Ignore the list of courses. On the Academy website, uh, the main site at classicalliberalarts.com, if you go to the top menu bar of the site and, and drop down the enrollment menu, one of the options is how to select courses. That article, How to Select Courses, gives you a list of recommended courses for children starting at any different age level. That's a good guide to get started. But what I recommend that you do, in addition to that, is either schedule a free consultation to meet with me. We can meet in a video meeting, we can talk by phone, or we can just chat live on the website. I don't care how, but schedule a consultation meeting, and then just let me know how you'd like to meet. I can help you get the kids set up with with a simple uh, set of courses that I know students enjoy, and we can get them off to a good start. So you don't have to sit there staring at the website, staring at lists of courses, as if there's no help and there's no way to know how to get started. There's no reason to feel overwhelmed. You just have to ask for help. Most families that are coming into the academy right now are doing that. They're asking for help. They're, they're making great decisions with regard to, to courses that they're adding for their children, and their kids are getting off to a great start. I've been amazed at how well our new students have been doing as they get started, because their parents are keeping things simple and making good choices with regard to course selection. And it's because they're asking for advice. They're contacting us and asking for help. So... Don't be overwhelmed by the course list because 90% of the courses are none of your business. They're for advanced students. That has nothing to do with getting started, getting kids enrolled. So don't be overwhelmed by the course list. There are very few courses that you should even be considering. Look at the How to Select Courses article to get started. Ask for help uh, for, for uh, more input. And I can even manually set up your accounts and activate the courses while we're discussing things in a consultation. So if you ask for help, there's nothing to be overwhelmed by. If you decide you're just going to spite yourself and do it all on your own and sit there with this modern homeschool spirit, I'm going to design my own curriculum, good luck. It's, I don't think it's going to work. You should ask for advice. That's what wisdom teaches. You should ask for advice and we can make this very simple and your children can get off to a good start. You can have a good, successful beginning. Because what most parents do who think that they're going to just do it all on their own, they're hypocritical. They overwhelm the kids. The kids crash and burn. And then the parents say, ah, we don't like that curriculum. And they're off to another one again for the 12th time. That's not going to work long term. The first decision is principled. Do you want your children to have the education of the saints and wise men? Or do you want a modern education? If you choose to go with the, the education of the saints and wise men, there's only one option. It's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And if you want to succeed, you have to commit for the sake of your principles and convictions. Not your day-by-day -day feelings, not the, the child's reaction on Tuesday. He was kind of you know, frustrated. It doesn't matter. These are long-term, unchanging principles and convictions that guide our education. If you can't commit to principles, you're just going to be all over the place. Jesus talked about this image of a leaf that's just blown back and forth as the wind changes. That's what you're going to be as a homeschool parent. That's how your children are going to feel as homeschool students. You have to commit to principles. 
and convictions and then persevere in the pursuit of those principles and convictions and you'll be able to overcome any difficulties because there are going to be difficulties in every homeschool program the difference with the difficulties in our program is that they are difficulties worth working through for the sake of those principles. That's the difference. One parent asked recently, what would be the key, based on your experience asking me this question, what would be the key in the families that persevere and make great progress in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy? And I can easily answer that. The families that succeed in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, the ones that you'll see at the top of all the scoreboards in, in the Academy courses, they are families where the parents are principled and they're committed to those principles. If there's a problem, if I need to make a change to a course or something like that, they just roll with it because they're committed to the principles. And we work out the details privately and, and they just press on. Those are the families that accomplish great things. Who are the families that leave? They're the families who aren't committed to those principles. Because like I said, if you are committed to your child receiving the education of the saints and wise men of the past, there's no other option for you to go to. And so if, if somebody complains, well, there were typos on the quizzes. So that's the justification for abandoning classical Catholic education and going to some other gobbledygook program because there were typos on the quizzes, we can easily fix that if you would just communicate. And so what happens is parents who are really not committed to those principles are the ones who quit and complain and leave. And that's fine. They shouldn't have been in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy in the first place. The difficulties for me to build this program are infinitely greater than any difficult any parent has to face to use this program. And the people who leave really weren't committed to the principles in the first place. The parents who persevere, the kids who you see in advanced courses working through classical reasoning and philosophy and, and the Summa Theologica and all these advanced courses, those are students in families where the parents came to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy with principles and convictions and they're not going anywhere because they know there's no place else to go if they want their children to study what the saints and wise men of history studied. That's, that's the key to success and perseverance in this. So I think it's clear that this feeling of being overwhelmed by all the choices is, is easy to free ourselves from. There is, there is not an overwhelming number of equal options to choose from. There's a, a simple question that needs to be asked first, and that's, do I want my children to have a classical education that was actually studied and taught by saints and wise men of the past? Or do I simply want to give my children a modern high school diploma? If I choose to go with the saints, there's only one option. It's a very simple decision. If I choose to go with the modern diploma, like I said, I, I would advise there's one option worth pursuing, and it's just Seton. Just go do Seton. But if you want a classical education, and, you, and that's a principle for you, there's only one option. It's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. Once you make that decision, fix your eyes on the principles. And, and commit and persevere through the difficulties. Communicate with us. Understand that we're, we're homeschooling parents with you. We're, we're doing the same thing with our own children. We know what the difficulties are. We face and overcome all the obstacles. And, and you can do it too. Communicate. Uh, develop a relationship with, with us and with other parents. We can work together and overcome the, the difficulties and inconveniences because they're not significant and work and persevere. Get your kids off to a good start with a simple selection of necessary courses. Ask advice when you need help. Get the kids off to a good start 
and things are going to go well. Homeschooling is not overwhelming for Catholic families. It's a very simple couple of questions that need to be asked and answered, and that's it. It's very simple. So I hope that's helpful. Like I said, if you want proof of these things that I say, if, if you want to say like some that I just, I just make this stuff up, go look at the book Understanding Classical Catholic Education. Go get a copy of uh, the Jesuit Ratio Studiorum from the 1500s. They explain the curriculum that they taught children throughout church history. Then look at the Classical Liberal Arts Academy curriculum and you'll see it's exactly the same as what was done throughout history. Read biographies of saints. Read about their education. You'll see that everything we do in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is what they did. Look at other programs and you'll see false claims of classical education. You'll see books that are written in the 1900s. How can they be the books studied and taught by saints? How can that be classical? It doesn't even make any sense. The great books is just an excuse to sell books. The Socratic method is just an excuse to charge parents tuition for unskilled teachers to just have conversations with their children. That's not classical education. Homeschooling as a Catholic is very simple. Get your principles on paper and stick to them. Don't waver on your principles. That's the key to not being overwhelmed as a Catholic homeschooling parent, making good choices for your children's education and persevering in those choices until the fruits are enjoyed. After years of consistent, stable study of a program that serves those principles. If your principles are concerned with the education of the saints and classical education, there's only one option. It's the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And I guarantee you, you'll find that we are willing to help you and work with you at every step from beginning to end. It's really up to you. And whether you share those principles and commit to them to persevere and are willing to ask for help and overcome troubles that are going to be present in any program as you work over time to accomplish those goals. I hope that's helpful. If you'd like to talk about these things, get in touch with me directly, schedule a free consultation. They're free in the evenings. Schedule a consultation, send me an email with all your questions, give me a phone call. Just for reference, the phone here in the office, which you can call during business hours, is 704-776-4696. But even better, if, if you want to call me anytime, my mobile number is 980-699-5575. That's my personal mobile number, 980-699-5575. You can call or text me anytime. I'm here to help you. You'll find that I'm just a, a Catholic homeschooling father myself, but I happen to be a Catholic classicist, and so I can offer this curriculum to other families. But we're in this work together, and we can do it. We can do it in our generation. The technology, the opportunity is all in front of us. We just have to commit to principles and not wimp out, but persevere in pursuing a true classical Catholic education for our kids. I hope that's helpful. God bless.